Greetings of peace from Madrid, Spain. My name is Enrique Simo. I'm based in Madrid and I coordinate the activities in the Brahma Kumari Center in Madrid. I'm also part of the national team of coordination in Spain. And as a professional, I work as an executive coach and I facilitate programs of leadership, mindfulness for companies. And I try to introduce all the time, as, as much as I, as I can, the meditation, mindfulness, and a little bit of uh, this um, awakening of the awareness. I've been practicing meditation for more than 30 years. And I think it's one of the, the things that I'm, I've been constant in all my life. Uh, since I've started, I practice every day. And not only 10 minutes, as many people ask me, how much do I have to practice? Uh, more than 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I say, well, to start, you can start with 10 minutes. But in fact, when you, when you see the benefits of meditation, and not only meditation, but I would say a spiritual knowledge to understand life and things in a different way, you find the time to be more time connected with yourself and connected with this inner wisdom that all of us we have. And today we will talk about this very interesting topic about resilience, the road to resilience, how to build this internal energy inside ourselves so that we can face this, this uh, I would say, interesting in one way and challenging moments that we are all living in in the whole world because now it's global what is happening and we know that to build the immune system of the body it takes consistent nourishment and healthy food so it's similar the road to resilience often involves as i said before about meditation you need a daily practice of uplifting and positive thoughts and and also to find people and surroundings and environments that can help you to that to do that and we will talk about this image or metaphor of the lighthouse who is standing tall and strong and the, the lighthouse can endure these powerful tides and it still remains firm solid like a source of guiding light to safety and i would like to share with all of you a little bit of my experience in how to how to be this lighthouse for ourselves for myself in these challenging moments but also how to become this lighthouse also for others what does the lighthouse the lighthouse gives light shows the way so that people can find the way then they are uh, free to choose what is the way that they want but the lighthouse is like become the example, the sample, the point of reference where people can see and can copy or can get guidance or can get this a little bit of light so that they can see what to do, where to go, how to act, how to behave. And in this sense, as a person becoming a lighthouse, it's, a, it's an internal work. It's a work to find inside yourself this inner strength, this resilience. Resilience is this inner strength that allows you to face challenges and difficult situations in life. And, but not only to, to, to face them and, and to overcome them, I would say sometimes it's not so easy to overcome because there are difficult situations, especially, especially nowadays. So I would say first is the question of accepting that some kind of pain or trauma or, or suffering is there because the situation is difficult. It, it makes you feel not unstable, but has an impact on you. So for me, resilience is not just be unaffected by anything. No, you are affected by things because things are affecting us. And especially nowadays, so many uh, difficult situations are so many people uh, passing through but the thing is that you accept this feeling or this emotion that comes to you 
and you are open to learn from it and you are open to use this energy to become stronger and this is the thing how I understand resilience the wind can come and move you in one direction but then you have the strength to put yourself again back straight firm and continue in the direction that you want to continue this is why it's so important to have um, I would say a direction in life and here is where it comes the work on resilience if you don't have direction if you don't have purpose if you don't want to become better than you are and if you are not doing an internal work a spiritual work and knowing yourself and understanding yourself then you are um, you are very uh, vulnerable I would say vulnerable to all these situations and what would happen is that you will suffer because they are not easy they are not um, uh, they are not, uh, you cannot face them with this energy and then they are affecting you. So I would say the first thing is to have empathy with the situations, to understand the situations and to know that they bring difficulty. So many people have been struggling the, during these difficult times and we can see that change is always accelerating each and every single year more and more. So we have to be facing these times and so much changes. And this brings, a, I would say, a, an energy of scaring no? or uncertainty and, and people feel discouraged. And sometimes a lot of frustration and, and anger comes out. We are seeing so much violence because I'm observing that people are getting very frustrated inside. When you witness so many things happening and so many things that are not matching maybe with your values, maybe at a political level, maybe at a, an economical level, maybe at a social level, or even in relationships. So many relationships have been broken during these days because so many things have erupted from inside. So when you see these things, things that are sometimes even against your faith beliefs or, or the beliefs of, of life that you have, so in this disruptive moments is when more you need this internal energy that we call it resilience the energy that helps you to not only to face the situations but to understand them and be able to in one way or another to learn from them and not become weaker but instead of that become stronger so I think this is the hope for the future, to create the energy, the resilience, the strength internally, so that you can become stronger. What means that you can become more mature, more expert in life, and you can help other people also to become that. It's like going from the victim attitude, saying that all circumstances are affecting me and what can I do, and suffering and getting stuck in this suffering and change this and become the protagonist and become the one who can learn from it, do, it, do something about it and also finally even bring some benefit and, and find the magic that is behind all these sins. As many people say in China there is a symbol that has two meanings. One is crisis and the other sign is opportunity so according ho of how we position ourselves in these situations that we are living that are not easy I agree with that and sometimes are very difficult it's true but according to our internal position we can learn from them and pass through them and become stronger mature expert and many more qualities like tolerance adaptability flexibility patience so are so many qualities that we can develop in this moment rather than be a victim suffering having this frustration becoming violent 
becoming depressed and stay there, stuck there. And don't allow this energy to go out. And then you are really uh, giving yourself a lot of pain. The situation is painful, is sorrowful, is difficult. But what, would, what do you do with the situations? This depends on you. So the idea is to continue to move forward and stand up again if you have fallen. Because resilience is this energy that helps us when we fall down to be able to stand up again and continue to move forward in the direction that we have chosen and that we are connected with that. And with this, we, we need to acknowledge, as I said before, that these are situations that are causing suffering. And we have to see these situations like indicators that are indicating us that we can develop some qualities and we can continue to move forward in the direction that we want. For example, in a plane, imagine that a plane goes from Madrid to Barcelona and this is the direction that they want to go. And, and, and the plane is traveling to Barcelona and in the middle of the journey, there is some clouds, dark clouds, some uh, storm, something in the middle. And they face this situation. Usually they, 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 they say to the people, no, now uh, adjust your, your seat belts because some turbulence are there. And you can see the, the, the flight moving a little bit. And then again, takes their own uh, speed and then uh, passes through this storm and continues the journey directed forward to the destination. Imagine that all the, uh, any time that a storm comes in the way, the pilot changes the direction and goes to another, to another place and trying to avoid this storm. This is not the case. But this is what we do as human beings. When we see storms, when we see difficult times, we try to avoid them. We try to escape them because we think there are bad things. There are things that will bring us sorrow. And the first impact is like that. But if you are trying to escape from that, in fact, what you are doing is disconnecting from what is important for you, from your direction, from your inner um, stability, and then it's like you are escaping, you are a victim of the circumstances, of the wind, of the storms, or whatever is happening around you. And this is what most people are doing, trying to avoid the situations or trying to escape. And sometimes this way of escaping is also like uh, getting distracted with so many distractions that we have now through internet or through other things. So now is the time, and this is what I have done for the last year, I've taken more time for myself, more time for meditation, more time to reflect, more time to build this internal energy, resilience, to face the situations, but not only because I want to face the situations and not suffering, but also because I want to help other people to overcome them. So when you have this uh, attitude of wanting to help other people, then you have a motivation to do this for others also. So I would suggest you, if you are passing through difficult situations or difficult times, as many people, take your time for yourself. Many people say to myself, I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time for myself. Now it's imperative to find time for yourself. If not, it's very difficult to face the situations. And it's not being negative, but my feeling is that situations will become worse in a sense that the impact of COVID and all what we are seeing, it will be bigger than we are, what we are seeing now. So we need a lot of energy to be ready to face situations that maybe we haven't been able to live before and how to create this energy how to understand the situation 
and how to make them into energy and to become stronger. And here is when meditation is the basis for this change, for this uh, inner transformation. We need time to sit and reflect. Meditation for me is not only the practice of, uh, I would say, formal meditation, hmm? but it's also the attitude of reflecting, of pausing, of thinking deeply about what is happening of myself and how can I live in a different way all what is happening around me and to perceive the situations in a different way, in a more constructed way that I can take benefit from them even from the worst situations. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is to stop, to pause, to think, to read something that can give you some new insights, to listen to some lectures, spiritual lectures, inspiring lectures that can give you new ideas to understand the situations in a different way. Because sometimes we think that we can do all the work by ourselves, but it's not true. We need sometimes help. We need sometimes to go to a place, to a meditation center, to a place where we can read something deeper, to contact a person who can help us to rethink our life and to reflect on our, our, our situations. So we need sometimes help or new information. And first thing to understand is that externally the world is changing as never has changed before. This is a reality, this is a fact. And life is constant change. So if I rely on external things, as we have been doing for decades, thinking that money will give me security, that my job will give me security, that this relationship with, will give me security, now all these pillars are shaking. And external things are not giving us the security as before we thought it could be. So this is why we need to pause and think that everything is shaking outside. And the energy from outside doesn't give me the stability, the strength, the resilience that I need to have inside. So the first thing to understand is that I need to bring my attention inside. I need to work with my inner world. I need to understand myself internally. I need to go inwards and start if you haven't start or continue if you have, have already started with this journey. Start or continue to study yourself inside. To learn how do you feel? How do you feel in different situations? And to see when you change your consciousness, when you, turn, you change the pattern of your thoughts, see how this creates a feeling, creates an emotion, creates an attitude. This creates a behavior. And this behavior becomes actions. And these actions become, create an impact in your life and the life of others. So this internal observation or how creating a, a consciousness based on some powerful thoughts are creating a whole experience in yourself that is impacting directly your life and the way you experience life. And then you can help others also. Because when you're firm, stable, like the lighthouse, the, the ships, the boats that see the lighthouse and see the light that's spreading, they start to feel safe because they say, wow, there is a lighthouse. There is the light. Now I can see. Now I can move in this direction or that direction. So just observing and seeing a lighthouse, immediately the boats and the people who are in the boats and the ships, they feel security. They feel safety. They change their internal energy. So this can happen and this is happening also in our normal life. When someone is feeling fear, anxiety, is feeling frustration and, and this internal anger because things are not like 
supposed to be. Things are not like their expectations. And surprising things are happening in their lives. When they meet a person who in the same situations, in the same circumstances, is able to remain stable, is able to remain firm, is able to create a good energy, a good vibration of peace, of compassion and empathy, and also of a kind of serene happiness. I would not say to love and to create um, external happiness, no, but a sense of, okay, even if things are like this, but there is a possibility to be well inside yourself, the well being, being well with yourself, inside yourself, and don't be affected so much by the circumstances. You know, now I work for companies and many companies are focused completely on the department of well-being. Why? Because people are suffering and they don't know what to do. So they are creating these areas where they try to find responses, answers to the situations they are living. So now they are very open to mindfulness, to meditation, to reflection to deep conversations, to be close to each other and to know each other better. Because people are realizing, and especially companies, because they are seeing the impact and the people who are working through internet all the time, all the time in front of a, of a screen and separate from people. So this isolation, so many psychological impact, it's, uh, it's being observed so that they are bringing the attention to the things that can help people to get back to this well-being. But the first thing is to go inside yourself and to pause. You cannot get this internal energy of resilience, of stability, of um, stillness, if you are focused outside, doing things, running here and there, working all the time, producing all the time, achieving all the time. This is the normal energy. But this is not the energy that will help you to face the current situation. So when you go inside, you can observe yourself and you can learn from your thoughts how to create an impact in your life, as I said before. And then, this is what happened to me. When I received the information, when I took the course many years ago, about the Brahma Kumaris, the course of meditation, and they taught me that I'm not the image that I see. I'm not the character that I'm performing in my life, in my story of my life. I'm something more than that. I'm the being that is living inside this structure, this physical structure. So when I was aware of that, because this information I didn't have before, I was thinking that, yes, something must be something more than what we are seeing, what I was seeing and experimenting in life. But I did not have this clear information that I am a being, a conscious being. We call it a soul. And I, the soul, I'm living in this physical structure. And with this physical structure, the body, I'm expressing myself. I, I live my life. And I communicate. And I feel and I express myself. But the understanding that I'm not the structure, I'm not the body, I'm a conscious being. So this was really something really impactful for me and changed my perception of life. And when we understand that when we feel and experience that we are this spiritual being, a soul, and we understand that we are energy, and energy is never destroyed, and we enter and work on the concept of I am an eternal being. The body gets old, gets destroyed for many reasons, gets ill. But I, the soul, the living energy, the conscious being, I'm different from this body. And I will continue my journey. So when you practice in meditation and on reflection, these thoughts this kind of awareness 
it creates a big impact in your life. A change, completely change of perception. And then you start to see things in a different way. And then you have a point of reference. You can go inside yourself and connect this with this little tiny point of energy that they say to me it's positioned in the center of, of the forehead. So I start to practice and bring all my attention to this point and slowly, slowly and after a while and took time and practice, I was feeling that yes, it's true. Here is this powerful energy where I can observe the world through my eyes. In this position, it's like the control room from where I observe the world, but also I express myself through my, through my mouth, where I can listen to the world through my ears, and I can move my hands and all my body. But I'm there, sitting there, and observing from there. And there I have control of all my body and all the things related with my body. But I'm there. So from there, I can remain stable. And when my attention is there, I realize and I experience that a beautiful energy of stillness and peace and calmness were emerging, were being activated. So I was surprised how peaceful I was thinking, feeling, and how peaceful was becoming my mind. This was never before. So when I start to have this kind of experiences, I said to myself, I want more of this. Because this was at that moment in my life, one of the best experiences in my life. So I, I decided to continue to build this internal energy. At that time, I didn't know that this could be called also resilience. Now I understand that it's very connected with that. So I started to take the course, to practice, to talk to people, to listen to audios, to see videos. So my interest was so big, so interested in that, that it has become my passion. So now every day I read something, I study something, I practice something, I go inside myself, I observe myself, I learn from circumstances, and I use everything that is happening around as an indicator, as a signal, as a messenger that comes to teach me something, to continue to move forward in this journey for, I would say, not perfection, but I would say more to, to know myself better and to become my authentic self, to become really myself, free from fears, free from frustration, free from anxiety, free from all these emotions and energies that limits you and makes you smaller and when you you realize that you are much more stronger than you think that we have such a powerful energy inside ourselves it's not an energy to fight with people or to get angry or to impose things no this is the energy of anger this is the energy of weakness in fact but the strength to be peaceful the strength to be stable the strength to be firm, even in the uh, big storm, and be able to become this light for others, and the reference for others, this requires a lot of attention inside, a lot of practice of what we call soul consciousness stage. And then you understand that not only you, not only me, I am a soul, a pure energy, conscious being, but I understand that others are also the same. So I start to see them not as the image, but as the light and the energy that is inside themselves. And this is a way, very powerful way of looking at others. And this creates an impact on others, because others perceive that your vision, your gaze, doesn't go to the weaknesses or to the structure, goes to something deeper, and you are seeing the potential, you are seeing the beauty, you are seeing the light, you are seeing the greatness of the person who is in front of you. And according to your vision, what you see is what the other person perceives from you. 
So imagine if you are feeling fear, anxiety, frustration, and you focus your attention on the defects of on others or on the weaknesses of others, this energy creates more of this kind of energy. And this is how the world is working now. A lot of energy of fear, anxiety, uncertainty, uh, frustration, depression. So we need to do this work. There is a need for people who decide and take the responsibility to become a lighthouse, to be proactive. Not easy, I know. Maybe you are thinking, yes, but my circumstances are difficult. You talk like this because you are in a better situation. No, all of us are passing through very difficult situations or have passed already before even for difficult situations. And maybe we will pass through other more difficult situations. But don't get stuck in your weak thoughts. Don't try to justify your position. And if you want to do it, you can do it. Because finally it depends on you. But let me tell you, if you stay there, you will suffer more. You will feel more and more small. You will feel more and more scared. And you will feel more and more weak. And you will be disconnected from yourself. But if you take the decision, because depends on each of every, every one of us, the decision to work inside, to find the knowledge that you need to find, to find the people that you need to, to find to have the conversations that you need to have, to read, to see, whatever you need to see, and to commit with yourself, to work on yourself, and to create this new consciousness of who am I, I assure you, that you will feel much better. And this is an energy that gives a lot of fulfillment in life, not depending on circumstances, but depending on the work that you are doing inside yourself. And the more you practice, the more you practice, you feel that a very special energy is growing inside yourself that makes you feel very comfortable with yourself. And this um, makes you grow your self-esteem and your self-respect, which is so important for a healthy life, for a fulfilled life, for a good life. And when you feel good with yourself and you enjoy being with yourself, all the concept of loneliness, of solitude, of... Um, isolation disappears because you have learned the art of becoming your best friend. And when you are your best friend, you enjoy being with yourself. This is the problem of many people. They are not their best friends. Even some of them, they are their own enemies here in their minds because they have created these internal negative dialogues. So please, in these moments, learn the art to become your best friends. Learn the art to create the best dialogue inside yourself that you can. Your beautiful thoughts creates a beautiful consciousness. Remember, this creates an attitude in life. This attitude becomes behaviors. These behaviors become actions. And these actions create the experience in your life and also inspire others to do the same. So now there is a need to become a lighthouse. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to, do, to give advice, to say what to, what to do, what to not do. Just be yourself. Just, just be stable. Just remain connected with your soul and understand who are you. And develop this self-respect. And what happens then? When you start to connect with yourself in this way and you start to connect with your spiritual identity, I would say, then your mind becomes more silent. Your heart emotionally becomes more quiet. Not big emotions, not big eruptions, just quietness, stillness. And this becomes like a pattern in your life, more stability. 
And this is what we need now because it's very difficult to share all the time your own energy. But when we learn the art to take the energy from some greater source, source than us and bring this energy into your life and share this energy with others, then things are very different. You become a real lighthouse. So let's have now a practice of meditation and enjoy with these concepts. Because finally, the idea is with what do I connect? I connect with the suffering and the fear and the pain and the frustration or I connect with myself, my greatness, my potential, my internal consciousness, with the soul, and connect with the Supreme Being, with the light, and it will be a complete different experience, depending on where you put your attention, where you connect with what you connect, and the energy that you bring into your life. And all this happens inside yourself in a very silent way, in a very uh, quiet way, in a very, I would say, incognito way. So let's have a practice. So now, find posture that you can remain there for a few minutes relaxed centered and that you can forget your body so first thing is to observe your body and move a little bit your shoulders your hands your feet move everything a little bit so that you can relax and release any tension that you can find there. Very good. That's it. And now connect with your breathing. Breathe in and breathe out. And allow your attention to accompany the natural rhythm of your own breathing. Nothing to do. Nothing to resolve. Nothing to plan. Nothing to organize. Not even nothing to think. I will help you with thoughts. Just follow my thoughts. Just be present. Just observe your breathing. And enjoy being present, doing nothing. Give yourself this beautiful gift of time for yourself. So just be there. Observe your breathing. And enjoy this moment. Enjoy your own company. Very well, very good. And with every breath, you can go a little bit more deeper and deeper inside yourself. Just imagine that every breath takes you more inside yourself and connects you more with the present moment. Leave the past. Whatever has happened, leave it in the past. Leave the future. Whatever worries or fear do you have for the future. Let go of everything and just connect with this present moment the only real moment that exists, the now. So be there. And 
now, bring your attention within. It's like looking inside yourself and observe what is happening inside you. What are the feelings that are you experiencing right now? And describe them with your own words. Doesn't matter if they are good or bad. This is just a classification that you are doing, perception. Now I invite you just to describe whatever you feel inside yourself. And be a detached observer. Observe, describe, accept. And at the same time, be there, present in this moment. And continue to observe your inner world, the world of your feelings, sensations, maybe emotions. And you can go a little bit deeper and observe your thoughts. Observe the screen of your mind. And you can imagine that your mind is like a beautiful blue sky, clear sky. And every thought is like a cloud. Clouds appear in the sky and sooner or later they disappear. They always disappear, finally. So thoughts come to your mind in the same way. But they come and they go like clouds. Make every thought into a cloud. And don't be attached to it. Don't give your attention to it. Just allow it go and become the observer from a distance and observe how your thoughts are pop up, coming up, appearing in the screen of your mind. This is normal. This is happening all the time. But now you are learning the art of being the observer. being able to remain detached from your thoughts, detached from your feelings, detached from your body, and also detached from your story. And just start to become aware of who you really are. And you can create this thought in your mind. I am a conscious being. I am a soul. I am light, energy, conscious energy. And bring your attention to the middle of your forehead and feel the energy that is there in this point. And from there, create these thoughts. I'm light. I'm a soul. I'm a conscious being. And my natural nature is peace. Accept that internally, inside yourself, there is a source of beautiful energy called peace. And this internal energy becomes the resilience that you need to face all situations. Resilience is in your soul. Resilience is in your heart. Resilience is in your internal world. When you connect with your true identity, when you connect with your spiritual identity, 
focus your attention there. And just remain quiet. And in calm. And realize the power that you have inside yourself. And now, in this state of being, of consciousness, imagine that a beautiful ray of light descends over you and enters your head. A beautiful beam of light, full of love and peace. Peace and compassion. And your mind is filled with this beautiful energy. And your heart is filled with this beautiful vibration. Peace in your mind. Power in your heart. Love in your soul. And all these energies become the resilience, the power that you have inside yourself to face any situation, to face them from peace, from love, even from happiness. Because you know now that everything that comes in life is to make you move forward. To take, take you to your destination. Life always comes to help us. There is the energy of life helping you. Yes, there is your own energy helping you. And then there is the energy of the light helping you. So now you are not alone. You are with life. With, you are with yourself. Now to absorb this beautiful energy of the light and allow your mind and your heart to be filled with these beautiful vibrations of peace and love. Nothing to do, nothing to talk, nothing to say. Just Open yourself, open your mind, and open your heart to this beautiful light. And just remain there in silence for a moment. Enjoy a moment of silence. good. And now you can breathe deeply. Move a little bit all your body. Smile. <laughs> Open your eyes if they were closed. And come back. Come back doesn't mean that you disconnect from this energy, this experience. Just come back to this material world, to your body, to your place. But remain in this energy inside yourself. Get used to feel this energy of resilience inside yourself. And as much as you can, connect with your soul and connect with the light. And then you will become a light for others. And this is what it is the call of the time. There is a need for lighthouses. There is a need for human beings who become strong and stable and give hope to other people who are suffering. There is a lot of confusion, uncertainty, fear. So now is the time to take this personal decision. 
depends on you. I cannot do anything for you in this sense. You only can do something for yourself. But I invite you to research, to investigate, to try, to practice, to reflect, to talk and have conversations with other people about these topics. And practice, practice, practice. And you will enjoy life. Even in these challenging moments, you will enjoy life. So it has been a pleasure to be here with all of you and be able to share a little bit of my experience. I hope it's useful for you and helpful for you. So nothing more. Om Shanti. Have a nice day.